so let's get started. This talk is about how we can improve the monitoring and observability for Kubernetes using the open source tools. My name is Nilesh. I've been an enterprise architect for one of the leading bank here in Singapore. And I'm also uh, what they call as Microsoft Most Valuable Professional or MVP for last six years. And recently for my contributions to the uh, Docker community, I was also awarded with the Docker Captain uh, recognition. You can find me on various social media. I put the links here and also a link to my YouTube channel where I talk about Kubernetes and various cloud native stuff. <clears throat> uh, let's get started with today's talk. Has anybody seen this uh, uh, iceberg picture related to Kubernetes before? So if you're seeing this for the first time, uh, maybe you can't see it right at the back. But what it talks about is the different layers of different tools, technologies, and information that is required when you start working with Kubernetes and when you want to make it like a production grade uh, Kubernetes. So starting from the top, it's very easy to start with creating a deployment, getting your service up and running and having multiple replicas, having a config map. But as you go down the different layers, your complexity keeps increasing. So it becomes very difficult or it is quite challenging for even an experienced Kubernetes administrator or a developer to manage things like stateful services, then having custom resource definitions and advanced things. And it's a very challenging aspect which most of the companies they find when they start running Kubernetes in production. So how do we handle this? One way is to look at what CNCF provides in terms of some sort of guidance. And uh, these are some of the tools and technologies which they have published on what they call as the trail map. So if you are new to uh, CNCF, these are some of the projects which have matured. And these are some of the things you can start uh, based on different things like containerization, CI, CD, looking at observability, uh, then we have the service discovery, uh, networking, various things. Uh, this is a good way to start. And then they also have these different landscapes. What I've taken here is just a landscape related to the observability part. And if you go on this CNCF landscape 2.io, you will find the landscape is quite wide. It talks about databases and various other things which the different CNCF projects are uh, running or what are the different projects available in each of these category. So we'll focus today in this discussion more on the observability landscape. And uh, sometime back, this is almost like uh, four years old now, there was also a CNCF observability radar which was created. I haven't found an updated version of this, but at that point in time, if you have heard about the technology radar which is published by ThoughtWorks, this is on the similar lines where CNCF gives its views about what you can adopt, what you should trial, what you should assess based on the maturity of the projects and what state those projects are in. So obviously, over the last four years, these different projects which are listed here, here they have gone through different phases and some of them would have gone from adopt to, uh, or some of them would have gone from trial to adopt phase. So, uh, we heard about this in the morning sessions as well, the three pillars of observability, starting with logs, metrics, and traces. And that is what we will see in this session as well, how we can use open source tools to incorporate these three things with uh, Kubernetes. Let's start with centralized logging and try to understand why do we need centralized logging. Now, when we build cloud native applications, there are different uh, aspects where we need centralized logging and there is a need to have centralized logging. Uh, let's focus first on the container-based applications. We might need logs which are application specific. I come from banking background and in many industries, we need to retain the logs for a period of time, like six years, seven years, 10 years, depending on the regulators. If we use the default logging mechanism, these logs are not available for this much duration. So we need to retain these logs for a longer period of time. That is one aspect. The other one is, uh, workloads which are scheduled on different uh, nodes during the application restarts and updates. Now, traditionally, when we were using, uh, let's say, three-tier applications, it was quite easy to just take the logs and store it in one central place or take a backup and uh, archive them somewhere. 
But with cloud native applications, they are very dynamic in nature. We might enable auto scaling. We might have, we saw in the previous demo where K native was used to dynamically scale the number of instances. In such cases, if the node where your application was running and due to some reason the workload gets scheduled to a different node, then there is a potential that you might lose those logs. You might not have them after a certain period of time. In terms of Kubernetes infrastructure itself, uh, some cloud providers, when you do the upgrade, they don't do an in-place upgrade. They just replace your node with a different node and they drain the earlier node and they shift the workload to the new node. Now, in this case, again, if you lost the earlier node, your locks are gone. If we are talking of past services, not just Kubernetes-based or container-based, we also lose the control over where and how we store the logs. Uh, things like we, when we use infrastructure as a service or platform as a service from cloud provider, we have very little control over where those logs are stored. We might just get a service to say, okay, you can fetch your logs from here. We don't have a finer control like that we have in our data centers. So these are some of the reasons why we need centralized logging. And if you've heard about uh, this concept called, or this patterns uh, or recommendations called 12 factor app, Centralized logging is one of the recommended practice there. Uh, this has been replaced or upgraded with 15-factor apps, but what it essentially says is you should treat your logs as a stream of logs instead of storing them physically on a machine or somewhere. You should stream them and then, uh, as part of your infrastructure components, store them in a centralized location. So in this example, I'm going to use a demo which is like a financial services application, which has got five different microservices running. There is a backend service, there is an account service, there is a authentication service, a forex service, and a transaction service. And all these services, uh, they write logs to a collector, which is Loki. Loki is again an open source project, which does the log aggregation. And then I'm using open telemetry collector to write these logs onto the uh, Prometheus, and to visualize the logs, I'll be using Grafana. So let's go into a demo of this and how see how this works. So here I have a Postman, which I will use to generate some workload. So I have this backend service, which acts as an entry point for all these uh, different microservices and it runs uh, uh, different calls to these other dependent services. So if you have used Postman, I like one of these feature of Postman, uh, which I can use like uh, collections to generate different kinds of request. I can send different post requests, get calls, and I can even call the Prometheus endpoints here. And then I can say, uh, how many iterations this has to run and I can also specify some delay in microseconds. So here I'm going to run this for 500 iterations and you can see that uh, the numbers are going on here and also what is the response. So this particular uh, collection has calls which are going through as normal calls and there's also a failure call there to simulate some failure. So you can see most of the responses are 200, but there is also a 404 error, which is thrown by one of the uh, API calls. Now, if I go into the uh, Grafana dashboard here, I have a connection to Loki, and uh, Loki is the log aggregator. So it collects these logs from all these services and publishes it to uh, Grafana. I can use Grafana to visualize. And here you can see that I have a filter for the backend service. The name of that service or a label associated with that service is backend service deployment. And uh, below here, you can see the heat map of how the logs are generated. I have been testing this since morning and just populating some logs. And you can also see the logs here at the bottom. So if we want to go into a specific log entry, uh, we can go below and uh, look at the logs. So. Here you can find somewhere that get customer details from account services called. It's uh, giving a start and end kind of info. So this is all real time. So what this means is I don't have to go into individual nodes or look at individual pod. All I have to do is to configure Loki in such a way that it collects logs from all of my uh, services and sends it to Grafana. 
This is the application specific logs. I can also do the same for infrastructure related ones. So in here, I can build another query and in the labels, I can here say, look for a node. And I've got a three node Kubernetes cluster here. I can look at one of the node and I can get the logs which are coming from that particular node. So with this one component, I get the logs from both my application side as well as the infrastructure side. Okay, the next thing we are going to look at is the matrix. And uh, again, why do we need matrix? Uh, matrix, they help us to collect data at different point in time at an aggregated level. Logs are good for knowing at an individual level or individual transaction what happened. Matrix are useful to know over a period of time how our resources are getting used. So from an application point of view, we might want to use uh, matrix to collect things like the resource usage, things like uh, scaling the needs, to understand if our application needs to scale, if we need to enable auto scaling and things like that, and also to monitor any anomalies or outliers. From a Kubernetes point of view, again, we can look metrics for uh, CPU and RAM usage, the health of APIs, and again, uh, if we want to enable auto scaling. Auto scaling can be both at the uh, pod or the application level or as well at the cluster level. So these matrix, they can help us to identify the needs for uh, these kind of features. And same thing goes for the past services as well. Uh, we want to monitor resource usage. We want to see the scaling needs and if there are any bottlenecks, matrix can help us identify that. So for the matrix demo, again, I'm going to use Prometheus and Grafana. And I use the same application and I use what is called as a Cube Prometheus stack here. Uh, if you have used Helm charts to deploy any of the third party applications, uh, I find this very handy where Cube Prometheus stacks comes with Prometheus, Grafana, Alert Manager, all these components combined together in one single Helm chart. And it sets up everything for us, even including some default dashboards. And for the application specific services, the five microservices that I have here, I use a uh, custom resource definition or CRD to collect the matrix using what is called as a service monitor. So that service monitor collects the matrix in the Prometheus format. And then using the open telemetry collector, it publishes them or it pushes them into the uh, matrix storage, which is Prometheus. And then again, we use uh, the Grafana to visualize this. So let's switch back again to the demo mode and uh, see this in action. So here is an example of a dashboard, which is a resource level dashboard. This is coming by default again with the cube stack Prometheus. And I'm looking at the compute resources at the cluster level. Uh, there are various other dashboards which come through, but all this is provided by default for me. So I can look at what is my CPU utilization, what are the requests, what are the limits. Uh, this can again be at the uh, different sources as well. In this case, I'm only using Prometheus as the source, but I can add multiple sources and all this is customizable. So all the widgets that we have here, they're based on the data which is coming in Prometheus metrics. So I can go and edit all these visualizations. I can use the Prometheus query language or PromQL and specify what query has to be used and I can also change the visualizations. So. <laughs> This is, again, something I find very handy where in order to get started with monitoring the cluster state, you don't have to spend too much time. You can use this built-in uh, visualizations and get started very quickly uh, using some of the community uh, created dashboards. So if you want to know what are the other dashboards, you can just go into the dashboard section here and we can see that uh, there are dashboards created for the alert manager, there is core DNS, uh, there is the API server compute, uh, there is the networking one. So all these different aspects related to our Kubernetes cluster, we can monitor them very easily using these different dashboards. And then 
I am also using a dashboard provided by Istio for a application specific metrics. So here again if I go and generate the workload, we can see in real time that these different metrics here regarding what is the uh, duration of my HTTP request, what is the throughput, how are the different processes consuming memory and all the threads, all that information I can visualize in real time using these dashboards. Uh, think of trying to doing this manually without having something like this. If you were to do it using the legacy technologies, I am pretty sure it would take quite a long time for us to come up with something like this. So that's on the uh, matrix side and in order to integrate these matrix again I am using open telemetry and open telemetry has this uh, support for different languages. My application is built using Spring Boot which is a Java based framework. So here you can see that it can automatically do instrumentation for Java language. So I don't have to make changes to the code for this to get started. I can define a custom resource of the type of instrumentation and I can specify the language. Java is one of the supported languages where it can automatically instrument and it can send the uh, telemetry data to whatever backend we want to use. Now with that let us move on to the next part. The last part is about distributed tracing and uh, again earlier session uh, where we talked about uh, uh, Jaeger and using distributed tracing. This is a similar concept why we need distributed tracing uh, in terms of uh, understanding the complexity of the application. When we do microservices based uh, development, uh, there can be a lot of calls going from one microservice to another that can be calling another microservice and when we need that visibility into how the flow is going between different microservices. Distributed tracing helps us to understand the complexity of the system in terms of what calls are going where and uh, with the traces we can also identify how much time each call is taking. So if there is any performance issue we want to monitor the performance, we want to optimize the performance, distributed traces can help us identify those bottlenecks. And obviously when there is problems in production, we want to debug the problems. Again distributed tracing really comes into the picture to help us identify, let us take a scenario where you might be having 5 replicas of your service running and imagine that on one of the particular node where it is running, there is a problem. So distributed tracing can help you identify that particular node where that problem is happening. And I will show you one example of this how uh, this can be identified. So in this setup uh, I am using the same financial services app and I am using Jaeger as the uh, distributed tracing framework uh, where uh, there is a micrometer component which uh, spits out the uh, matrix and then there is a Jaeger operator which I have deployed in the Kubernetes cluster which collects these matrix or which collects these traces. And using the open telemetry collector, it writes it to Jaeger. So we visualize this using Jaeger user interface. So let us see this in action. Again, let me run this same 500 iterations of the same backend service. And switch over to the Jaeger UI. So here I have got all those five different services, the account service, authentication service, backend service, uh, forex service and transaction service. All of those traces related to these services are available here in Jaeger. We will focus on the backend service which is like the entry point for me. And when I say limit this search to 20 traces, uh, we can see most recent 20 traces a few seconds ago we had this and in this particular case we can see that uh, there were 4 spans involved and 2 of them had the errors. So in case of uh, such scenarios we can go we can drill down into the uh, method call level or the service call level and we can find out where exactly the error happened. And, uh, Obviously we have the complete time span about how much time each of these operations takes. 
that is the failure scenario. In case of success one, we can also find that there are cases where it would have taken longer span. Let us increase to 200 traces. And here we can see another API call uh, which has got 11 spans and it is taken about 20 milliseconds in here. So, again I can do the same thing in terms of drill down and identify uh, how much time is being taken for each of that hop between different services. So, we see that the backend service is calling the authentication service here. Uh, then that returns the authenticated user information, then it goes into the account service and then it goes into the transaction service. So, each of this call we are able to trace right from the beginning till the end and we can identify uh, what is the time taken for each of that span of the call. So, in terms of the end to end observability, in this demo what we saw that uh, we have these 5 different microservices and we use Loki for the log aggregation and we use uh, Grafana for visualizing those logs and when it comes to the metrics we use Prometheus and Grafana as the combination and for the distributed traces we are using Jaeger. All this is combined or all this is integrated using open telemetry which is more like a standard. It does not tie into any of these specific tools. So, if we want to switch from uh, one of these backends to a different backend, it is possible. Open telemetry allows us to do that and it can be done very easily using the configuration changes. I like to use this analogy of using the right tool for the right purpose as well. If you look at many of these tools uh, or many of these projects, uh, they try to do many things at one time. Uh, I take this example of mode of transport. So, if you want to move from one place to another, there are different modes. You could use a bicycle, you can use a bike, you can use a car. Uh, there are different factors which influence uh, why you would choose one over the other. Let us say it is a holiday season now and you want to spend more time with your family. You might choose a cruise, but if you want to reach very quickly to your destination, you might use a plane. So, it all depends on what is your requirement and what is the right tool for that purpose. Uh, previously in earlier demos I have used ELK for example for log aggregation. So, there might be a case where ELK fits better in your scenario and you might want to use elastic stack for that matter instead of using Loki. So, this is not a guidance or this is not a sure shot solution to say you should use only these tools. My suggestion is based on your mileage, find out what is the right tool for your purpose and use that particular tool. So, in summary, I would say that the modern day cloud native applications, they need different ways to address the observability and monitoring. We cannot rely on legacy ways of uh, just looking at CPU and memory usage. Uh, and these modern day tools, they help us in uh, enhancing the observability of our applications. As applications become more and more distributed, we need different kinds and different ways of monitoring them and things like uh, log aggregation metrics, distributed tracing, they help us in doing that. So, I hope you found this useful what I demonstrated. There are some challenges when we uh, get into this. Things like uh, if you are not using something like open telemetry and you were to use these tools separately individually by themselves, uh, you might have to have too many agents running. You might have different SDKs to integrate to that is one of the challenge. The way you overcome that is by using something like open telemetry which allows you to consolidate all those things in one place. You can see all your configurations in one place and it can be easier to maintain and manage your uh, observability stack. The other one is instrumentation and vendor lock-in. Uh, in this case, the suggestion again is to use something which is open standard. If you do not want to have a vendor lock-in, try to stick to those tools and those products which support open uh, standards so that it is easier for you to migrate if you want to in future. Uh, things like cloud native locks, cloud native matrix, uh, cloud native traces, these are new things and uh, for that you might have to use something which is 
recent and new things like fluent blade, fluent uh, D, uh, Prometheus, Thanos, we saw the example in the earlier demos. So these kind of things, again, when you use uh, open technologies, they are easier to migrate to, or they are easier to manage in my opinion. And then when you need a single pane of glass, uh, Grafana is most commonly used nowadays. So I prefer to use Grafana. With that, I think I've come to the end of this session. In case you want to have some references here, I'll put some links and these slides are published already to uh, SlideShare and Speaker Deck, so you can find the links there. Uh, I've also put some links to my earlier talks which I've done in other forums like uh, Reactor and uh, there is also this wonderful series of talks done by this guy called Hussein Dalai where he talks about Prometheus Grafana. So uh, if you are interested in implementing any of these in your projects, feel free to refer to them. The source code for this demo that I showed is available on GitHub and there is also a markdown file. If you want to reproduce this, you can create it from that markdown. And uh, the SlideShare and Speaker Deck links are there for this particular talk as well as my earlier talks which I have done in the past, they are available. So thank you, thanks for coming. I think we still have some three and a half minutes for Q&A. Happy to take any questions before we break for lunch. Yes. Sorry, I haven't heard about it. So the thing is, uh, all these uh, catchwords, right? They keep coming up nowadays. Uh, if you look at uh, four hours, six hours, seven hours. So I think over a period of time, as technology evolves, we see that these kind of things they keep added. A Twelve-factor app, for example, is a classic example. When it started, uh, maybe 2010 or 2013, there were twelve factors which uh, people were talking about. Now there are fifteen factors. Maybe. Uh, six months down the line, we might hear about 18 factors. So uh, I haven't heard about the fourth one, but it's quite possible it's there. And it's good if it is there. Thanks. Any other question? If not, thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.